Thousands of Americans are taking time out this long New Year's weekend to pay final respects to the nation's 38th president. The body of Gerald Ford is lying in state in the Capitol Rotunda, where the state funeral was held Saturday night. NBC's Mike Becerra is on Capitol Hill for us. Mike, good morning. Good morning, Chris. Yes, the solemn atmosphere continues here on Capitol Hill in Washington, and mourners will get one final day to file past the flag draped, draped casket of former President Gerald Ford as he lies in state in the Capitol Rotunda. Opening at about 9 a.m. Eastern Time until 6 o'clock, it's been a steady stream of well wishers, mourners, and people who are simply just curious, want to bring their kids along to see this part of history, expressing a sense of patriotism that really is sort of inspirational once you start to see these people and talk to them. They're filing through steadily, not overwhelming crowds, about 2,000 to 2,500 people an hour. Later today, we do expect that President Bush, back from Waco, Texas, Crawford, Texas, I should say, at his Western White House, will be by later in the afternoon to be followed shortly thereafter by his father. We also expect incoming House Speaker Nancy Pelosi to be back in town to come to a viewing today at some point. It all leads up till tomorrow when President Ford's casket is removed from the rotunda. He will go by the United States Senate where he will pause symbolically, whereas Vice President, he presided over that body before being borne down the Senate steps and off to the National Cathedral for a national day of mourning and a very large service with lots of dignitaries and VIPs in attendance, Chris. You mentioned Nancy Pelosi and the major service service that is coming tomorrow, but there was that uh, state funeral on Saturday, and yes. some people commented on the fact that a relative handful of members of Congress actually attended that. Uh, are we expecting a lot more tomorrow? We will, certainly. Uh, now, the Democratic leaders on the Senate side have been traveling in South America and will be unable to attend tomorrow, as they were, be, they were unable to attend on Saturday night. Nancy Pelosi will be there. Charles Schumer will be the top-ranking Democrat at that service tomorrow. But keep in mind, it's the time of year. A lot of people did have previously scheduled travel. But compared to past funerals in particular, of course, President Reagan's funeral was two and a half years ago, a relatively uh, sparse attendance by members of Congress and far fewer members of the public. And again, you have to consider the time of year uh, when uh, bringing that into account, Chris. Absolutely. Mike, thanks very much. And uh, as we look at a live picture that we have of the Capitol Rotunda, we should mention uh, that the actual viewing does not open until the top of the hour, about 45 minutes from now. And uh, we will continue to watch that throughout the day for you here on MSNBC. President Bush returns to Washington a few hours from now to take part in the public viewing of President Ford today. NBC's Charles Hadlock is just outside the president's ranch in Crawford, Texas. Charles, good morning. Good morning, Chris. President Bush will fly from Crawford to Washington and then motorcade directly to the uh, Capitol to uh, pay his last respects to Gerald Ford, our nation's 38th president. Then tomorrow, the entire Bush family will attend the state funeral in Washington, where Mr. Bush will deliver the eulogy at the National Cathedral. Chris. The thousands have been filing past President Ford's casket in the Capitol Rotunda this weekend, and they'll continue to do so. It will reopen at 9 a.m. Eastern Time, the top of the hour. And there to meet with some of them yesterday, two of the president's sons, Jack and Stephen Ford, spent Sunday shaking hands with passers-by, thanking them for taking the time to pay the respects to their father. Robert Green is a presidential historian and MSNBC analyst and author of The Presidency of Gerald R. Ford. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to you, too. Chris. I watched that, thought that was absolutely extraordinary. Is mm. that unprecedented? It is unprecedented. The closest thing that I could think of that came close was uh, Bobby Kennedy, after Ken Jack Kennedy's assassination, went up to pay his own personal respects and was up there late at night. He wasn't planning on seeing any tourists, but they were there and he stopped and shook some hands. But it's never been planned by the children before. Like this. You know, we've often talked over the last several days about how Gerald Ford was this regular guy from right. this regular town, and it it just seemed like a classy thing to do. But the kind of thing mm -hmm. that, in frankly, small town America, you would do. People come pay respects to your father. You're there to greet them and to thank them. That's right, and it struck me as something that Jerry Ford would have done too. And, and the family themselves being very close, it, it brings the it brings the funeral back home to the American people. It takes some of the regalness and the grandeur out of it and 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 makes them makes them look and see that this is just a regular guy quote unquote who passed away with his son standing there one of the other things that really struck me and we're seeing a picture there of a Betty Ford mm -hmm. is that here you have a woman who's elderly herself who's just gone through the death of her husband and 
this is so many days right. and so many events and it almost seemed to me like can't isn't there a way to make this less pomp and circumstance and and maybe not so trying on her physically emotionally I mean she's just so classy and she That's bears right. herself so well uh, I wonder if you know there's any wiggle room here between you know keeping something simple the way it seemed that Gerald Ford was and, and maybe the needs of his widow and the needs of the country to have there's, all of these different there's ceremonies. really not I wish that there was um, because I think that if the Ford family had their way he'd be buried in Grand Rapids right now but you need the week the, the Reagan funeral set the precedent of the week the American public is expecting that kind of a mourning period you have to travel all the way across the country plus you had the holiday thrown in there so there may have been an extra day of lying in state uh, for the Fords but I think that if the Fords family had their way it would be compacted she took an awful lot she did specifically took an awful lot out of this funeral the case on uh, the foot the flyovers and tried to make it as simple as was humanly possible and still maintain uh, what was necessary for a state funeral but this is about as uh, tight as you're going to see it, Chris. This is, this is as simple as it gets. I think well, so. Uh, your heart goes out certainly to the family and uh, one of the she things does. that I've noticed just anecdotally in hearing people talk about this is great admiration for Betty Ford mm -hmm. and uh, I think a new recognition of what kind of first lady she was so that's a good thing too. Bob, we'll be talking to you more throughout the day. Thanks so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. President Bush is heading back to the nation's capital this afternoon after spending the holidays at his ranch in Texas. And he's got a lot on his plate. He'll begin by stopping to pay his respects to former President Gerald Ford today. NBC's Jane Wattrell is at the White House. Jane? Well, good morning, Chris. This is the final day members of the public can pay their respects to former President Ford. About uh, six, seven minutes from now, the Capitol Rotunda is going to open to the public, and then uh, it will be open until six o'clock tonight. A steady stream of people are expected to file by President Ford's uh, casket. Yesterday, roughly 2,500 an hour we're walking past the casket and among the mourners later today will be President and Mrs. Bush who are returning from their ranch in Crawford, Texas. This will be the first chance the president has had to pay his respects in person. It was Saturday when Gerald Ford's body arrived at the rotunda for the beginning of his state funeral and at that time Vice President Cheney, a former Ford aide, praised the 38th president in a ceremony for helping the country to heal. The president's visit to the Capitol is going to come on the heels of criticism of Mr. Bush Bush's decision to go to war with Iraq by former President Ford. Now that criticism came in the form of an article in the Washington Post. It was from an interview that the former president had done two years ago with Bob Woodward and it was made public two days after Mr. Ford's death. President Bush will be delivering a eulogy at a memorial service tomorrow for Gerald Ford at the National Cathedral. The memorial service is being held at the same location as Ronald Reagan's funeral two and a half years ago but it is not expected to be as elaborate. It's expected to be more low-key, reflecting Gerald Ford's presidency. Chris? Jane, thank you for the update. We appreciate that. The members of the 110th Congress are getting ready to return to Washington. Before they get back to business, though, many of them will be pausing to pay their final respects to President Gerald Ford. NBC's Mike Vaccara is on Capitol Hill. And Mike, what can we expect over the next 24 to 48 hours? Well, Chris, the procession of mourners and well-wishers continues to file past President Ford's body is at Lyon State in the Capitol Rotunda at about a, a pace of 2,000 to 2,500. Crowds have thinned out somewhat today. Not an overwhelming crowd, but certainly moving through steadily. It is raining here in Washington, and it is, of course, New Year's Day and the holiday. Uh, having said that, we can expect to see President Bush, President George W. Bush, come in later this afternoon, perhaps about 3 o'clock Eastern time. He'll come directly from Andrews Air Force Base after alighting from his Western White House in Crawford, Texas. He'll be followed shortly thereafter in the rotunda to view the casket by his father, the 41st President of the United States. We also expect Nancy Pelosi, the incoming speaker, to come by sometime today for a viewing. She's just arrived in town. And then tomorrow morning, a National Day morning, uh, beginning with a service in the National Cathedral, President Ford's body will be born there by cortege sometime early, about mid-morning in Washington, Chris. And what are we expecting tomorrow, Mike? All of the former presidents, for starters, all the living former presidents will be at the uh, ceremony at the National Cathedral? Well, absent President Carter, it appears that there was some sort of deal, have been reported a deal. The two men spoke while President Ford was still alive, and they agreed that President Carter would speak at the service in Grand Rapids, Michigan, to follow, where, of course, 
President Ford will be interred on Wednesday. Uh, some of the eulogizers at the National Cathedral on uh, tomorrow, on Tuesday, however, include George Herbert Walker Bush, the 41st President of the United States, Henry Kissinger, the former Secretary of State, uh, Tom Brokaw, of course, the former NBC uh, Nightly News anchor and current NBC News contributor, and, of course, the current President, George Walker Bush. All will speak. Uh, two of the four children will also offer readings at that Weather service. In America. Chris? Gary, thank you very okay, much. Okay, you're welcome. President Gerald R. Ford lying in state this morning in the Capitol Rotunda and again today Americans are filing by slowly paying tribute to the 38th president. Now just moments ago members of the Ford family were there as well to visit the casket of the former president. Tomorrow President Bush will come to the National Cathedral to honor and pay tribute to President Ford. He will be there at the Rotunda later today. These somber ceremonies are taking place as some rather damning criticism of the Bush White House has emerged, words President Ford allowed to be released upon his death. Presidential historian Robert Greene is the author of The Presidency of Gerald R. Ford. Thanks for joining us. I want to get to uh, the uh, Woodward interview in just a minute, mm -hmm. but one of the things that Mike Vaccaro, our reporter on Capitol Hill, told us is that there will not be every living former president right. tomorrow. In fact, Jimmy Carter will instead be going to Michigan. What is your take on that? Well, it's unprecedented. The former presidents have usually presented a united front at these events. Uh, more importantly, uh, having Carter there in Grand Rapids, I think, is testimony to the fact that President Ford saw him and 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 his relationship in a very special way. They had developed into very close personal friends by the time of Ford's death, and singling Carter out for this speech at the graveside is a tribute to Jimmy Carter and a tribute to the way I believe that Gerald Ford felt about him. You know, we've been seeing a lot of clips uh, over the last several days, and one of them was a Tim Russert interviewing both Jimmy Carter and Gerald mm -hmm. Ford together on a stage, and I was really taken with their sort of humorous bantering and sort of the digs that they were taking right. at each other in a very uh, charming way. Mm -hmm. And it reminded me in many ways of now Bush 41 and Bill Clinton and after, you know, divisive campaign, how the two of them have come together. And it, did it surprise you knowing what you know about Gerald Ford and about his family that he would develop this close relationship with Jimmy Carter? No, not at all, Chris. Gerald Ford, unlike many of the politicians today, knew the difference between an opponent and an enemy. Enemy. And he realized that Jimmy Carter was a uh, was a dig in his heels opponent in 1976. Uh, but he also realized that there was a great relationship between their two libraries, the two goals of the libraries, and and he felt that Carter uh, Carter was one of the members of the club. The difference, however, between the way that Carter and Ford's relationship developed and what we're seeing between Clinton and Bush one is that that relationship is very public. The relationship between Ford and Carter two very private men has developed almost on the QT and people are just really beginning to learn about it. It was the way that those two men are. Let me go now to the uh, the, the Woodward interview and the criticism mm -hmm. of the president and of the war and uh, did he ever give you any indication of uh, of something like that when you spoke with him? No, quite the opposite, in fact. What he gave me was an indication that these men were like his like his pupils, uh, young kids who were working for him and were studying under him, and he, he relished the mentor role. But the rules were different. The rules were different for Woodward and for Mike Beschloss and for CBS News and for uh, the Daily News, the people who took these interviews. They came in and they said simply, this is going to be done after your death. I was working on a book. The president knew that this was going to be published in his lifetime. So the, the give and take, the dynamic, as you well know, was completely different. And the criticism, did it surprise you? <sighs> no, not really. Ford was a much more uh, open and a much more blunt man than people gave him credit for. In public, he held it back. He was a professional politician. But in private, when he sat back, he, he, he called, he called it as he saw it. And so it doesn't surprise me that when he knew that the tapes were going to be closed, that he opened up, particularly to a Bob Woodward, and particularly in light of some things that had happened to Ford's friends, like Brent Scowcroft. But how interesting the timing is now. And you have to Absolutely. wonder, Bob, whether or not this is going to have any impact at all as the president makes President Bush right. now makes his decisions we're about just going to have to see Iraq. yeah all right thanks very much it's thank a you pleasure to talk extraordinary to you. scene unfold at the capitol rotunda the family of president ford for a second day is greeting mourners there as they come to view the former president as he lies in state in the capitol hill rotunda
Let's bring in presidential historian Robert Greene, author of The Presidency of Gerald R. Ford. We were saying earlier that when this happened yesterday, how extraordinary this was. And uh, a few moments ago, I was watching Susan Ford. She was actually bending down and handing little cards mm -hmm. to some of the children. I mean, I've never seen anything like this. I, it's unprecedented. They've turned the Capitol Rotunda into a Grand Rapids funeral home. Uh, it's, it's like calling hours. They're treating it as, as if this was right in, the, in their neighborhood. And to watch Susan and Jack particularly, they're not just, you know, people aren't just walking by, as you say. They're giving cards. They're stopping, giving hugs, talking, and people are getting FaceTime with them. It's a it's very, very small town just exactly the way that I think that the President Ford would have wanted it. You know, President Reagan's son, Ron Reagan, uh, once told me that, you know, there's this public funeral and you put on this brave face and then it wasn't until afterwards when mm -hmm. everything was over that the family really had a chance to grieve. I think sometimes as Americans we watch these scenes and, and they handle them so incredibly well right. and you wonder how they're able to do this. What can you tell us about the Ford children? Well, certainly Susan is in charge of this operation. Uh, it was striking to me the first night that Betty came out on her arm, not the arm of her eldest son. Uh, Susan is, uh, as you know, very influential uh, at the Betty Ford Center. She's taking control, I believe, right now of the operation of the funeral and really representing the family. The sons are not by, in the background, however, by any stretch of the imagination. While Susan is, uh, it seems to be running the details of the, th of the operation and with her mother, the family the children are together as one. You can see them there in the Capitol, receiving them as a family, not just as a unit in shifts. And even though there has been so much pomp and circumstance, essentially, I mean, the United States really knows how to do this, right. and especially with the military. And when the casket was first brought up to the Capitol Rotunda and the ceremony, I just sat there mesmerized. Obviously, this isn't something that happens very often, but this could have been much grander, and the family didn't want want it to be that way. They didn't want it to be that way. So far it hasn't been that way. And this extraordinary scene that we're seeing at the Capitol this morning shows that the family is getting their way. Being as I said, I want to be brought over. The Secret Service is probably doing flips and turns over this right now this morning. Uh, but they want to do it this way. They've, they, it, it, it's their father. This is, this is exactly the way that they want their father to be waked. Well, I have to tell you, it's a very moving scene there at the Capitol, and mm -hmm. uh, I give great credit to members of the Ford family who are able to do this, and uh, they have been there pretty much since it opened uh, at 9 o'clock Eastern Time this morning. Bob, thanks so much. We appreciate your insights. Thank you. And be sure to stay with MSNBC for coverage of the funeral of Gerald R. Ford. Tomorrow's memorial service at Washington's National Cathedral. Our special coverage begins tomorrow morning, 9 Eastern, with Chris Matthews and Keith Olbermann.